I derive a sense of value from being helpful or of service in some way. It almost makes me feel like, oh, okay, free pass to exist today. And then I feel really alone with everything. Because I, I have no model of no, no, no. successful relations with him. Thanks for letting me be here for you. Did you get hurt to you? You come here to me. So welcome back, everyone, to the Come Here To Me podcast. Uh, it's another Figs and Karen episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just like not everyone sees video, right? So I think the listener oh, okay. probably heard the... the yeah, your that was, that was me with a, a thumbs up and a slightly sarcastic smile. <laughs> yeah, like really enthusiastic smile. Yeah, we were just talking um, before we hit record about how both of us are feeling a little like stretched today. Yes. But then like, yeah, like, you know, that's life, right? And, you know, as couples therapists, we don't always feel a thousand percent on top of the world when we have to go into a session with a couple. Um, so I thought like today might be a good episode for us to, what do we call it? Like self a therapist yeah. and maybe just a, putting a little structure to it. And we do like, you know, like a rose and a thorn. What are three roses of being a couples therapist? Um, and what are three thorns for both of us of being a couples therapist? Mm-hmm. That sounds good. Yeah. You know, just give the listeners and viewers a little insight for those that care to know, yeah. like, how do couples therapists do the work? Because, you know, I don't know about you, Karen, but I hear all the time, like, how do you, like, sit with people fighting or how do you listen yeah. to people's problems? So, yeah. So maybe it's good just to do a little Behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. Like, what's it actually like? What do you like about it? What, what do you not like about it? We'll do a like, and then we'll each do a dislike, and then we'll each do a like, right. like that. Let's do it. Okay. Do you want to start? I don't care. I'll start. But... I'll start. Okay. Okay. One thing that I really like about being a couples therapist is when people show up and they are really escalated, really triggered, upset, feeling hopeless or desperate, and we help organize what's going on between them and reflect it back to them. And so they begin to understand and have like a, a new perspective on what's happening. And just that tends to give people a sense of hope, like that organization of, oh, so when you do this, you feel that, and then you do that, and then she feels this can be very helpful for people. And it's very satisfying as a therapist to organize it that mm -hmm. way. It's like the way I feel when like, my daughter is like makes a mess of the living room and then I come in and I clean it up and I'm like, Ooh, we like cleaned up and we like took something messy and we made it clean. Right. But it, that's really good. And, and by the way, I love that. Um, that's a, it's an interesting now little way to structure it as well inside of this. So that's what I like when it's messy and I make it clean because I, Karen, what do you get? I know you said it's satisfying, but yeah. help me understand exactly, like if I was an alien from another planet, what, what is so satisfying about that? Well, because it makes me think of how I feel when I'm in relationships and mm. I feel so much pain and confusion about what's happening. Mm. And so knowing what that feels like and being able to provide somebody with the clarity of like, hey, look, this is what's really happening. Here's what's actually going on between the two of you. And it's kind of like what, you know, a lot of what you did for me when we started working together, you know, all those years ago, like, God, that was a long time ago already. Um, when I would be like, ah, and you'd be like, no, but here's what's going on. Like, right. it's so, it feels so good to help just give people that organization and yeah. understanding. You know, it's great. But this is where, like, if I, so if I was going to hone it down, what you're saying, I, Karen, love to organize things. Like it helps me feel good when I'm organized, the room is organized. And so now for a living, I get to help people organize their relationship, what may look like or feel like chaos at first. 
that is inherently obviously it's great that it helps them just like thinking about that slightly differently for a second right but actually just organizing people's experience is just so good because i love being organized myself and and i love having my internal experience organized right. meaning i like understanding why there is a ripple in the lake Right. Like the lake is the lake is smooth and then all of a sudden there's a ripple and when that happens inside myself I have to figure it out. Like right. whoa, why is there a ripple now? So right. that helps me. And then yeah. the other the other piece of it is also I just think that I derive a sense of value from being helpful or of service in some way. So it just makes me feel good. Like it almost makes me feel like, oh, okay, like free pass to exist today. Mm -hmm. I did something good and helped somebody yeah. figure something out. Well, by the way, and this is my organizing mind right now, right? Is just separate, like I can't help but separate those into two different things, right? Mm -hmm. Like one mm -hmm. is like something that looks chaotic or is disorganized, just organizing it feels actually really good for me, Karen. So like right. you come to me with your disorder, like, like I'm upset, you're upset, we're doing all this stuff together. Oh my God, let me organize this for you. Cause it actually helps me, Karen, feel good. And then of course it'll help you feel good. And then of course, if it helps you feel good, then I get a second benefit, right? Exactly. which is, oh my God, it feels so good to help other people. Yes, exactly. Right. Okay. So it's good to, and by the way, yeah, this is like separating things out. So there are two, there are actually two roses. Organizing inherently feels good. And I kind of compelled to do it, mm -hmm. like in my own life and my house, with my relationships, but then helping other people organize. Oh, it also like, I get to feel like I really helped other people, which is like pff, helping other people. I, I think this is true for most people, right? This feels really good to give value or be of service to others. Yeah. And the darker way to put that is what happens for me is I'm like, cool, I get to exist today. Like I deserve existing today. Exactly. I did something good. You earned a muffin or I earned a muffin. Like, you know, <laughs> like if you help somebody. No, that would totally it will it, it totally makes sense. Um that's great. Well you might as well do a third one now, right? Okay, I'll do a third one. Okay, so what I like the best is when when a couple is on the edge of a cliff and they're peering over the side of the cliff and going, holy crap, like our relationship is about to end if we don't do something and helping them to get off of the cliff and understand how they got there and be in that place where they're both really vulnerable and they see each other's little girl, little boy inside and their own little boy and little girl inside. And they really are able to empathize with each other. And there's like all this like lovey, mushy, good open heartedness, like those moments, I live for those moments. It's like, whoa, this is what it's all about. Yeah. <laughs> Great. I love that. So again, so here's what I hear you saying, right? Just so to make sure I'm getting it. And you can tell me right is you get like one, like getting to organize people's experience, like you said, and you're actually helping them, but then they actually get to go from chaos, they go from chaos to organization. And then you help from that organized place that they actually get the love they both needed in this really lovely, like they're kissing each other, they're crying, right? Not to scare anyone for doing a couple of therapy, right? But those moments, yes, they're both getting the benefit of being in that connection, but you as the witness, you also, right, and like an active witness as the therapist, you are actually also get to feel the magic of that loving repair and connection right alongside them, but not in a creepy exactly. way. Exactly, exactly. And right. I feel so good. I feel so yeah. good. That's so great. No, it totally makes sense. I love that. And by the way, I, I remember this thing Dr. Wayne Dwyer said. Dwyer, is that his name? Wayne Dyer. Dyer. I knew I was saying it wrong. Dyer. <laughs> You know, that the the giver of kindness, the receiver of kindness, and the witness of kindness all derive benefit 
Yeah. Right. That's so cool. it's great. Like the two people giving and receiving love, but you actually getting to be the witness and even more powerful that you helped organize and bring them to this experience. Like your heart gets filled too. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. It's amazing. I mean, as you know, I often say like, yeah. oh my God, can you believe we get paid to like, to like get filled up like this, you know, when it works, right? It's incredible. Exactly. And it's like, it's not that every session you get to have that in every session, but when it is there, it is so satisfying. And some moments are really big and you've worked toward them for months. And some are kind of like smaller wins that right. still fill you up, but might not be as kind of fireworks as those specific ones. But they're, it, they're all kind of like, what makes me keep doing keep doing the work so beautiful this is good so you just did three roses right so again just to make sure because and this is more like therapy that's what i do as a therapist <laughs> right but i just want to make sure i got you right organizing feels inherently good yes that organizing is of value to other people you see it relax and that feels good and then you get to actually share in these magical repair moments like taking people from the brink of like they can't find each other to loving each other so deeply that is just like heart exploding goodness they're they're three pretty good ones yeah exactly really so good. let's pass it over to you Phil. man like how do i top that <laughs> what are your three well i mean obviously all of those i share with you like yeah. i'm gonna do what the clients do well, what karen said <laughs> yeah, you know. right, yeah, what you said. yeah just, you already said it why would i have to say it right you you say it with such irish flair that's ah, right. exactly <laughs> oh I'll, I'll say it in a, in a leprechaun accent <laughs> right oh i love i love organizing yeah yeah but um, <laughs> well look here's a couple of different ones i think the maybe they're not different but you know, like I was saying, like today, I like I feel really overwhelmed today, right? It was just like a lot of like just personal stuff, like people, guests coming and going from our house. Spent the morning cleaning, you know, getting the kids to school. Whew, you know, just like you know, therapy sessions. But what I love about being a therapist, and I do think particularly a couples therapist, is you know I often compare it to. It's going to sound obnoxious being like a professional athlete or being a performer on Broadway mm -hmm. that the whistle's going to go in the game, right? The, the referee will blow the whistle for the start of the game or, you know, the curtain's going to come up on Broadway and it's just fucking game up. Whether you're ready or not. No, this is it. Like, this is it. It is a performance art. And... I, I can feel it right now. It makes me emotional. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I got to fucking show up. Like, there's something really compelling about. Yeah. And I just take it so seriously, like that, you know, yeah, the bell rings. Um, no matter what I'm feeling like inside, no matter how the couple is presenting in front of me, I just got to do everything I can right now in this hour. Um, and that, I just, I love that call. Like when I do other work, like work on the business, um, you know, like all the admin marketing, all that stuff, like it doesn't have the same compulsion that like, like I have to be at my thousand percent best during this hour. Um, so this, it just feels so alive, like so alive. Yeah. Um, I love that. Yeah. And like no two sessions are alike, right? So you're right. always on your toes and it's always improv. It's always improv. <laughs> always improv. Now, by the way, you know, with, you know, just like, I know, like, you know, like, you know, we, we have other therapists on our team, obviously, you know, I hire them. And then I try, I mean, I have to water this down. I try and instill this approach to therapy and our therapist and i know i can really scare people right because i'm really intense like listen like you're you're a professional athlete right this is like a high performance growth mindset like you have to show up and i can see sometimes the therapists are like ah, hello 
What? <laughs> what? Because, you know, therapists are usually the, they have, that, that is not their mindset. That's why, that's why I became a therapist. Right. You know, so like, I, but, but I actually, I, I do think of it that way. Right. Um, but that's it. But this is a really good point though, of distinction between being an individual therapist and a couples therapist, because couples therapy is what we're talking about. And it's different. Like it is not passive. It is active. You are yeah. actively facilitating, organizing, helping people share with each other, interrupting, redirecting, containing, exactly. managing two nervous systems at the same time. Like there's so much going on. It is so different than just like that kind of like movie cliche of the therapist who's just like leaning back in his chair, half asleep, like taking a note here and there. Like that is not exactly. what we do. Is it, what was that like to hear that? Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. That's <laughs> just passing things back and forth passively. Yeah, no, it's um I just gotta show up, right? And and you know, sometimes you know, it's interesting if you know, I used to do CrossFit or whatever and uh power lifting. Like I was really fascinated by what it feels like at the bottom of a squat. Like taking a you know, for whatever, like let's say it just you're gonna do your one rep max. And that you purposely choose to go all the way down to the bottom and then find somehow find the will to lift yourself back up the standing. Like, why would you go all the way down to the bottom? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, why would you do that? And then when you're down there, why not just collapse? Why push yourself all the way back up the top? And there are times in couples counseling where... The couple, let's say, is fighting in front of me and I'm like, oh, my God, I have to jump in here. Like, I got to do something. And I feel like I've, I'm like I'm at the bottom and I could just throw the bar and just go, what was that like to hear? What was that like for you? I could just like just let, let them go. But I just I love I like it about myself that I'm compelled to I'm going to fucking stand up. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to activate, even though it feels terrifying. And, um, and like you said, Karen, like about, I feel like I deserve the muffin. And if I don't show up, I feel shit about myself. Yeah, that's the other side of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't do passive. If I'm just passive, like there's no muffins for me. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and then you walk away like, I didn't earn my muffin. <laughs> I didn't earn my muffin. Okay, so that's that's one, right? Just a call to show up, be present a thousand percent. It's just yeah. fucking magnificent, right? Um, yeah, just no, I always say like couples therapy, no place for cowards. Cannot be a coward. It's true. It is right. really brave getting in the ring there. And you can imagine some of our staff, they're like, okay, why do we work here? Like the <laughs> boss man is telling us we can't be cowards. I'm terrified, right? But um, It's never but, terrifying, though. That's the thing. Like, it doesn't become less terrifying at any no. point. Like, it's always, it's always terrifying. You know, a second, a second thing that I love about being a therapist is... You know the way you're saying about the magic when you organize their experience and they're really loving with each other? Um, and we talked about this in our last one about the impossible moments. Mm -hmm. I love the, I love just trusting, bringing people deeper and deeper into how, how devastatingly hopeless they both feel. <laughs> and you can you see- a masochist. No. I'm a sadist. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, but look, I just trust a thousand percent that that's the place they need to connect with each other. Yeah. And so I'm like, I will just keep going into more and more hopelessness and hope and despair and rejection and abandonment and more and more impossibleness between them. There's no way out. And again, it's like a fever. They were at a 104, 105 fever. And then it breaks really suddenly mm -hmm. with them having this huge empathy and compassion for each other and loving each other in this really sad place. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's just like, 
oh my god like it you know and at first i used to get a bit high in my own supply about like look how fucking good i am right <laughs> but, but now i you know I, I don't luckily i don't have as much of the ego part of it right look i know how to do a thing and i do a thing right um but just again just now now my ego is not as much involved and i can just feel just it's so beautiful when you get people to stop protecting themselves and they're just in despair and they lean on each other and they're crying together mm -hmm. not in yay connection but in deep sad connection I, I i just it's the best thing i know how to do as a human being right to just share that but like figs it's so cool yeah. and so brave yeah. that you know how to do that and that you do that again and again because i think that even more than than I do it, you do it. Like, I think more than anybody, you just go there and you do not stop. You're right. like, no, we're going deep. We're going deeper. I don't care what you say or think. Like, I have a plan and we're going to the bottom of the well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, by the way, you know, it's great. I love, I yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And... I just believe a thousand percent it's what helps people the most. Yeah. Connecting, you know, we're going on a bear hunt. We can't go over, can't go under, we can't go around it. We got to go right through the middle of it. Right? right. And so I know that the best thing I can do is bring someone right into the middle because that's where they'll find each other and love each other. And that's where they need to love each other for the rest of their life. So look, doing that with people, pfft, is incredible. Look, it's incredible, right? And every couple is a puzzle, a conundrum, yeah. how to craft that experience. It's always different. Um, so I love that. I love getting to see people break from the way they protect themselves just to the sadness and loving each other. It's just, it's just magical to get to experience that. And I have to say that I think that it's the thing that terrifies almost all therapists the most. I think a lot of therapists actually actively avoid oh, yeah. taking people to those places. So I think that really needs to be said as we're talking about that. Oh, look, and I don't want to like, yes, 99.99% .99 of therapists are avoiding that. Not on purpose. The right. clients are avoiding it. Right. The clients avoid it. The therapist avoids it. Everybody wants to feel better. They don't want to feel their feelings better. Right. Even yeah, though feeling exactly. their feelings better is what makes things better. But let's talk about that self of therapist part, though, that you as a therapist have to have, like you said, just a tremendous amount of faith that yeah. where you're taking them is the right place and where they need to go, even though it's painful for them. And you have to, within yourself, have the capacity to withstand that discomfort. Absolutely. Exactly. No, look, yeah, it's, it's really hard to do. Yeah. Uh, for most. Now, again, but I think I just have a leg up, right, um, being Irish. And, uh, <laughs> dare I say well, you may have a leg up being, like, Jewish. I'm a Jew. I know, exactly. I mean, no, but that's what I mean. No, but, we, but seriously, we oh may God. have a leg up. I know this is bad, like culturally, like just going like, look, we we're willing, you know, the, the joke about you're in an Irish bar and they just sang 20 sad songs in a row. And then the singer gets on the mic and says, and now for a sad song. <laughs> like, you know, that where there's a willingness to go into the, I remember when we had no shoes and only one potato for five, <laughs> you know, but like, there's just a willingness to go into yeah. pain and suffering. It's a part of life, right? Yeah. And I think it's what draw, I think it's what draws a particular kind of therapist to couples therapy, the kind yeah. of couples therapy that we do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so let me see, what would be a third one? So again, if I've organized this, so the first one is having to perform. I love that call. Right. I've got to find some strength inside me that makes me feel good about myself. I've got to show up a thousand percent. Can't do it half-assed. And then two, like getting to witness, like, like driving people to what this like transformational experience that is so scary for them to get there scary for me i gotta really trust and then to experience this beautiful connection in the depth of that pain that's just 
most beautiful thing I could ever imagine experiencing. I get to do it over and over again with people. (laughs) A third one that I love about being a couples therapist, it kind of goes along with the performance thing. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, the improvising. I think it's like, it's just performance art. Mm -hmm. Like it's craft, right? It's getting to be deep confrontational lovingly right um being like i really feel like i get to be my most creative analogies metaphors you know describing people in ways that makes them laugh about themselves Mm -hmm. um yeah it's um i yeah just just the improvisational nature of it affords me this like huge stage even though there's an audience of two <laughs> to be um to be really creative yeah um, yeah and by the way like i even again i really feel that deeply i all I like like you know my my hero as a kid was gene kelly like you know what i mean like if i let's i always say like if i had a um let's say if i if I wasn't overwhelmed by emotional pain as a kid, like, you know, you would probably, I would hope you'd see me as an extra. I would have been one of the bunny rabbits in uh, Rihanna's, um, (laughs) wouldn't be Rihanna, right? Is that how you pronounce her name? I think it's Rihanna, and I don't think they were bunny rabbits. I think they were some sort of weird alien creatures. Oh, really? Is that what they were? Well, whatever. I don't know. They look like aliens to me. I'm not going to say I would have been the lead, but, like, (laughs) I I love, I just love, like, creative, like, performance, right? And so, weirdly, as a therapist, I get to do that. And I get to, like, and I love improv. I prefer, I love dance, right? And I much prefer improvisational dance, the choreography, and every therapy session is an improvisational piece of art. Again, I know it's going to sound obnoxious to people, but I just, I get a blank canvas and I get to create with these two people to try and have this transformational experience like hour after hour after hour, right? Um, it's so true. And yeah. you never have a script and you never know what you're walking into. Like that exactly with Zoom, like that first second when you see them on the screen, you can feel what's going on and you're like, oh, okay, this is where mm-hmm. we are today. Exactly, yeah. By the way, I always, uh, was it like someone once, uh, one of my clients said that, they think they uh, think of me as Inspector Columbo. Like I look really stupid, like <laughs> really stupid. But then you know, Inspector Columbo puts it all together at the end. Right. Like, it was the butler. Um, <laughs> but but that like that thing at the start where it looks like we're making I'm making small talk. Like I'm actually you know actually I'm what's assessing happening? like what's actually happening inside of both of you and between the two of you right now. But it looks like oh Figs is just talking about his toenails. Right. Like, but actually, you know, where it's um, the the uh, creation has begun. But anyway, so there would be my three. Right. Like just to be that. creative, to feel the beauty of the connection. Right. That is possible by bringing people to their deepest pain together. How to, how deeply they can love each other. Right. Getting to witness that. Oh, amazingly powerful. I deserve many muffins. So if many muffins. Yeah. And then, um, and of course, just like the call to show up, right? Just the like answering that call, right? The whistle is blown and I just got to give it all, right? Um, I love that. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we'll just do one bad one. Um. Okay. I'll share one, which is, yeah. I guess kind of the opposite side of the coin to what we're talking about is those sessions where you are in the stuckness with a couple and you've not achieved a breakthrough moment and it just feels so stuck. Right. And you feel that stuckness just as much as they do. And I have to work hard sometimes not to get caught in their cycle and in the stuckness that they feel because it's like contagious, yeah. you know, so it can be easy to get immersed in it yeah. and not then not have the distance necessarily to be able to hold the 
the frame of the hope of what's possible for them and where we're going. And, yeah. and it's, it, it can just be moments that I feel that way and then come out of that. Or it can be like a whole session where it's like, Oh my God, we were just so stuck. But then a lot of times what happens though, even in times like that is then I can end a session and be like, I, I feel like a terrible therapist and then I'll be down on myself for a while. But then a lot of times what happens is, I'll say something like, how was that last session for you in the, the following week? And then they'll say something right. like, oh, it was really helpful when you said this, or we actually had a really good week because of this. And and then I'm like, okay, so sometimes even when I don't, it doesn't feel helpful to me. Like, I feel like maybe it was really stuck and I didn't do anything. Yeah. It might even still be helpful. But anyway, but that's a place where I get really down on myself if I don't feel like I'm doing enough or I'm not witnessing enough change. Yeah, no, that that's really good one. Right. And I think that's, you know, of course, like you said, I love it. it's the other side of the coin of the creative process is there's a lot of time before it transitions into some like an actual creation um, that like we're waiting for it to happen, which is really scary. I mean, you didn't use the word scary, but I certainly find I get scared and yeah, I can feel bad about myself. Yeah. Like if we're stuck and it's not yeah. working, um, that's look, it's just painful and it should be painful, right? Like that's, and then it's actually that feeling bad and scary energy, then hopefully that, you know, use the transition into whatever it is that's necessary to make that change happen. Right, right. But before then, you're in that moment where it's like, and then sometimes I make it, I make it even worse for myself, where I'll go like, oh, and they have kids, and they're relying on me no. to make it better. And you know, and so then I'll just create a really like dramatic story in my mind. Uh, and, you know, and then I and then I feel really, you know, I feel bad and I, I want to do better work. But it, yeah, I want to do better yeah. work and I want to make a difference. Yeah, yeah. well, look, for, for the kind of rewards we talked about, it come like, you know, everybody be doing it. If it didn't come as a heavy burden to bear to go into the unknown and like, it's painful. I can feel bad about myself, right? You can feel bad about yourself. It's scary. Cannot see how it's going to transform. Yeah, oh, it's, it's, it's a, it's a painful pro place to willingly go into hour after hour. Right. Um, and addictive. <laughs> I know. <'cause laughs> right? like, yeah, the pain is like, addictive. Well, you want to keep going because you need to get the muffin. It's like, I didn't get it last time, exactly. so I got to get it this time. But yeah, that place where we're stuck and it's scary and I can feel bad that we're not getting that transformation, right? That's hard to live in that place. So what's yours? The hardest thing for me, I, I think about this a lot. The hardest thing for me being a, a couples therapist is when we're, I'm not in alliance yet with one or both of the members of the couple and you know like an alliance you could just feel it right when we're all on the same team you get me you trust in me what i'm doing totally like so this is the interesting thing like like it's not about like i could have a, a someone who every time i say something they say fuck off figs right like even you would be like, Jesus, fix, how do you help that person? I'm like, ah, no, listen, they, they're totally with me. They got, I got them, they got me, that's fine. And I could have someone that they seem really agreeable, but they're not, they're not really <laughs> with me yet. Like you can just feel it, they're not really with me. Yeah, you can feel it. That period of time and again, it's part of the craft is to find, get that alliance with both people and then both of them together and then an alliance with the model that we're working with. But that period of time before genuine alliance, 
Ooh, they're they're the hardest. Like I look at my calendar for the week, and I've got okay, I've got two people that want to do like jujitsu with each other. I've got another two people that have knives and baseball, but like the, they wouldn't be the ones I'm scared about. And then I go, oh my god, I have two people that they're not sure about me. Yet. Yeah, oh, totally. yeah. Mm-hmm. Even if they're the nicest people in the world, yeah. So getting to a little an alliance. Um, that's really vulnerable for me, Yeah, you know, but again, I love it. That's part of the craft, right? I love it, but I got to get into that place that they trust me and they trust the model. They have some taste of, ah, okay, let's do this together. Right. And it's not like anyone says that out loud. Right. Yeah. Not having an alliance is really scary and painful. I love that one. Cause I totally feel that one too. And that's the exact way. I would describe it as when you don't have the alliance, you can feel it. They don't trust you yet. They're not yet convinced that you're the one that can really help them. And so it's like, you're still kind of auditioning and you're you're still in that land of like, yeah, they they haven't, they haven't fully kind of said yes. Exactly. Yeah. That's really vulnerable. By the way, just another little add on, you know, what's kind of weird for me since I started doing the videos and the podcast, I now sometimes see people that have seen me on video and some people have seen like, you know, I don't know, 20 or 30 hours of videos or like listen to 30 hours of podcasts Mm -hmm. and like they come into sessions and they're like, Figs, my man. Like they're looking at me like they've been in an alliance with me all my life. And I actually have to catch up. I'm a little like, okay, it's a little weird that you like me and you know me so well. And I, I'm only, so there's, there's this kind of a new element now that like being out in the yeah. world, like in media. Totally. That, yeah, like it's kind of funny sometimes that it kind of hits me the other way when they people already start in an alliance and I'm... Oh, hello. They already trust you. You're like a celeb. Oh, well, I mean, exactly in my own mind, right? Tell my kids. Well, right? in their mind. In hey, their that, mind, right. too, they're like, oh, it's that guy from all the videos. <laughs> exactly. But, um, but that, yeah, that's an interesting difference that it's a little bit more vulnerable for me when the, they seem feel like they're already in alliance with me and, and I, I'm the one that has to catch up. But do you feel more pressure like to do better because you think that they already have an idea of how awesome the therapy is, is going to be or is that not part of it for you? Like they have they might have an expectation. No, I, I look, it's the same. I'll tell you the big vulnerability I have is the same thing as this podcast. And, you know, everybody tells me over and over again. Like, I just always worry I'm repeating myself. Like, if, if someone is listening to all the podcasts, I, I, my self negative story is like, what value can I possibly give them? Right. The negative story is you look there. People are telling me stuff that I said. I'm like, I don't even remember saying that. Like, you actually know me. Like, you actually <laughs> know me better than I know me. I remember nothing. Yeah. But it's, <laughs> but, but the reason you think that is because it's so much the water that you're swimming in. Right. That you think you have nothing new to say because but you have lost touch in a good in in a, in a way because of how advanced you are in your skill set of where other people are and that what you're saying is absolutely revelatory to them. And so when somebody is giving you a revelation to something you really need to hear because it's a way that they could see out of their pain, they don't just want to hear it once. They want to hear it a hundred times, a thousand times in a thousand different ways to really integrate it and understand it and make them feel better. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, I I need to work on that. Like you're saying, I need to work on slowing down. A lot of times, as you know, like I'll be saying, well, I said this before, let me say it very quickly. Right. And, And instead of like speeding past it, but yeah, so, so that would be the only vulnerable thing is, I just have that, like, if people already know me in a different different medium, it can bring up self-doubt. Can I really be of value? Now, look, I know it's all about experience, information, some information. You got to you gotta have that transformational experience. But, but that would be the one doubt. 
you know, like vulnerability it brings up. And then it's just weird. It's just weird when someone see, like, look, I got um, I have I think I wore it for a podcast. Uh, Teal got me a Zephyr T-shirt. Mm-hmm. It has a picture of my dog on it. And when I walk down the road with the T-shirt on my dog, all, you know, <laughs> every single person who I don't know is looking at me. Oh, sweet man. <laughs> right? Like, you know, that's a bit vulnerable. Listen, I don't know you. You seem to already love me. <laughs> right? Like, your your positive affect towards me is freaking me out. So there's a little bit just like it's vulnerable that people like see me positively and I don't know them yet. It's just a little <laughs> weird, right? But I think that was good. Like, you know, we got to talk a little bit about what we love about being a therapist and just, you know, for me, Alliance, for you, Stuck, they kind of overlap, right? Alliance yeah. and Stuck sometimes, right? Yeah, absolutely. And that's what, that can be what makes the, the hours, like, there are some of the most painful like moments, right? Yeah, That's I think it's any sense of like not being effective or not exactly. being at our best or not seeing the change that we want to see is is vulnerable for us as therapists and can cast doubt on our skills and our sense of value and that's hard by the way and i know this is bad we're making these i'm making cultural another reason though i think irish and jewish right (laughs) like guilt like i always say like a big part of the process is you actually should feel bad afterwards and then whatever i feel bad about i'm now going to work on like as i'm like walking around the park and i'm going to get better at that thing Exactly. Guilt is helpful. Guilt? In a, in a small enough dose. That's right. And also, just since we're talking about the Jewish-Irish connection, this is why I knew as soon as I met you that I wanted to work with you because the self-deprecating thing that Irish uh-huh. people do and Jewish people do is right. so great because it's like, it's so disarming. And it just, for me, it makes me instantly comfortable. I'm like, okay. Mm. I could totally work with this person. They're not on an ego trip. Like they're totally willing to like talk about how, you know, whatever their issue is. Or yeah. It's just, yeah. just nice. Yeah. Oh, well, that's great. And likewise, I, yeah, I felt a affinity with you instantly. Yeah. And I think that's also something that really serves you. And I know myself in working as a couples therapist, because it, it puts you on level playing field exactly. with the people. You're not trying to act like you know better than them. It's like, I relationships are freaking hard. They're hard for me. It's not any easier for me. I suck at them just as much as everybody else. You know, it's, it's all painful. And it's like a willingness to go there and to say that about yourself and to make jokes and to joke about the stuff that's so painful and difficult. I couldn't have said it better. You're so right. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> Thanks, Biggs. <That's> so true. <laughs> so hey, that was fun. It was nice to talk about it. I got to feel parts of myself, right? Like what I'm passionate about, about doing this work. It was really nice. Yeah. Thank that you. was a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you, <laughs> listeners, viewers, and we'll see you next time. See you next time. Cheers. Bye. Bye.